In this video, I'm going to review how to work with angles by using the PMD 200. And to use my example, I have a residential foundation plan here, and you can see that I have a grid line, one line going down this way, with a garage sitting right here at a 70 degree angle to the actual building. For this video, I'm going to show you how to type in the dimensions for this angled garage so you can know how to lay out with the PMD 200 regardless of the angles that you're working with. So to keep this simple, what I did is I stationed on this grid line one that you see right here. This intersection right here, which is 1A, my 1A line, is my first point, and my direction point is going down the one line here. And you can see that represented right here. Here's grid line 1A going down the one line. So what I need to do first, if I zoom up in my PDF, is I need to lay out these walls here to get to this point. Let's just pretend that I need to lay out these walls here to get to this reference point here that's gonna begin my angle deviation for my garage. So I'll speed the video up here real quick, but I'm gonna go ahead and type in these dimensions and pretend to lay out these four points. This one I already have, so I'll lay out this one, then this, then this. Okay, I know I sped that part up, but what you can see is theoretically I've laid out this top wall going this way, then the little nook I have coming in, and then of course all the way out to my P3, which is going to represent the beginning of my garage. This wall down and over. If there's any questions about how I was able to do that, please see the basic point layout video that I have in the playlist. But let's jump on to see how we can work with angles. You can see on my drawing I have an angle labeled here 7 degrees, and down here I have it labeled at 83 degrees. So I'm able to get some sort of guidance on how I need to spin this wall going to the right of theoretically my P3. Now I also have this dimension, 16 foot 8. So I know that from this point, I need to turn this 7 degrees, and from this point down to that 7 degree angle line, I need to go 16 foot 8. So how would I draw that on the tablet? Because P3 is my selected point, which is my point with the garage, I'm going to go to the ellipsis, and I'm going to ask it to begin with an angle. Now what you can see is I have a myriad of points here, R1, P1, P2, R2. What I have to do first is to tell it what point it's going to be referenced from. And because I know that P2 to P3 is a straight line, represented right here in the PDF, I'm going to use this point to this point as my line that I'm going to be spinning my angles from. And I'll show you what I mean. So P3 is my main point I'm pulling the angle from. My selected point I'm referencing to is going to be P2. And now you can see that the line that I'm going to be pulling my angles from is this dashed line here, P2 to P3. Now before I go on about talking about specific angles, you can see that right here I have a default 45 degree angle turns. Starting from P3 to P2, you can see I've gone 45 degrees to the right, now I'm at 90, now I'm at 135, 180, etc. I'm making a 360 degree circle, all oriented to this line here. By default, these arrows, if clicked, will always turn at 45 degree increments. Now if you look at my drawing, here's the line going this way, and obviously I need to go 7 degrees from basically this orientation of the line. I'm simply going to move my line to look directly north, so it's a 90 degree angle. And now all I need to do is add 7 degrees to that so that this line is going to the right. And now I have that 7 degree angle as the garage indicates. So obviously I'm going to type 97 degrees in this box here. 97. And say OK. And now you can see I have that angle. Yes, I'm a 90 degree to P2, which is fine, which is what I expected. And now I'm 7 degrees to the right of the line that's directly 90 degrees to that line. Now looking back at my plan, I need to go 16 foot 8 down that line on that angle. I'll type 16 foot 8 inches, press OK, and now I have that line represented with the new point representing the corner of my garage. I will confirm, and now the tool is going to help me lay that point out with my target plate when I'm ready, which I'm going to skip, but we'll theoretically assume that I laid that out. I want to show you the button pushes to make sure you know how to draw these in. So right now I have P3 and P4, which represent this point and this point on my garage. Now to lay out the rest of the garage, I'm simply going to go back to my angle function and use this line as my now default angle line so I can quickly and pull these 90 degree angles going forward. So you can see I need to move 16 foot 1, 26 foot 1 down this line, and then simply connect the dots going back and up. So here I am on my drawing. I'm going to go back to, I'm on P4 right now. I'm going to go back to angle. My back point is gonna be P3. That's my set line. Everything's relative to this line now. And now I can simply pull my, my 90s. And I know that from this point here, 
I need to move down 16 foot 1. And this line here will now represent this top line in the garage. I'll confirm that point, and theoretically, I would lay that out in the field. Now that that point's made and theoretically laid out, I'm now at this point, I'm going to go to the angle function again. And this time, I'll go ahead and reference P4 as my back line. Okay, I'm still staying in this angled square here. I'm going to spin it until I know it's going the right direction, 90 degrees to that line. Or in, I, I know it says 270, but you can see it's at a 90 degree angle to that line. And I simply need to pull this one 26 foot 1, 26 foot 1 inch. I'll say confirm point. And of course, theoretically, I would lay this out in the field. Now this point needs to simply come back 16 foot 1 coming the other way. I'm on P6, going to angle. My back point's going to be P5. Spinning at 90. Type in a 16 foot 1. Now I have that four corner locations of all of my garage. Let me show you two more things before we finish the video. Let me go back to P4 just to use this as an example. Now on P4, you'll notice that when I go to angle, there's an option to stay in angled mode. So right now my back reference point is R1. For this example, that's fine. I'm not going to do much layout with this, but you can see that this is the line, my temporary line I'm working with, and then I'm going to be pulling my angles from. And so right now I'm P4 to R1. This is my line, and I'm a 45 degree angle off of that. That's fine. When you stay in angled mode, it locks this function here. And essentially what you can do is make a stretch of points down this specific angle and save a bunch of points all at once. And to show you that as an example, let me make a bunch of points at six feet segments. I'll say new point. And I'll keep clicking new point until I'm done making this stretch of points at whatever offset I choose down that stretch. So if you have a stretch of pipes or different dimensions between doorways or drywall track, you can simply go down an angle and set a bunch of stretch of points at your convenience at that angle. Once you're done, uncheck stay in angle mode and then confirm your points. Now all of these points can be clicked on and be laid out. One other thing I want to show you, in this case I'll use P5 as my example. If you ever need to come in and confirm dimensions from certain points to another, once you have a point active, you can go to the ellipsis, go to your distance, and simply click on the points that you want to check distances from, from a specific point, to verify that everything is as it should be. I hope this video has helped you. Please leave any questions that you have in the comments.